And that way we can all look funny at the same time. <coughs> This is a really good thing. Um, yawning usually means we need more oxygen, mm -hmm. but there's also, they found that it stimulates a particular part of the brain that gives you, I don't know how to describe them, blissed out neurotransmitters. <coughs> so, so yawning is a good thing, even if, even if you feel a little embarrassed. See, nobody can see you, I can see you, but nobody else can, but you guys can all see me look goofy. So. So play with yawning, it's a really good thing, and that's just one of those cases where the body kind of takes over and does what it needs to do, but there are huge benefits to yawning, so so be glad when you yawn. It's a, there are, there's a specific part of the brain that has to do with um, feeling blissed out and being able to use creative thinking. So yawn away, yawning is a good thing. Isn't yawning just taking in a ton more oxygen? Mm -hmm but it stimulates this certain part of the brain uh, because of the relaxation involved and because it's just completely taken over your system because uh, it needs to. So you're not, there's nothing you can do about it. It's like relax or else, you know, and there's no or else, it just happens. I think that it has something to do with that, but they don't understand it yet. I'm sure that oxygen helps. Well, I just wanted to say, the reason I yawned, I think, is because my brain's like kind of overloaded, like all this breathing and everything. It's like, oh no, we have 30 minutes. I can't pay attention. I just want to go to sleep. And so then I yawn, which I guess to kind of brighten me up for something. Oh, that's good. Well, here's the thing too. When you do this practice, you'll notice that you're feeling tired. You'll notice when you're feeling hyper. You'll notice when you're a little freaked out. And it'll make you feel like or think that the breathing is causing that, but usually it's that we are chronically tired. We don't sleep well. We don't breathe deeply enough to sleep well. And so when you begin to really let the body, give the body its vacation and the, its abundance of oxygen, and minerals, vitamins, and whatever else it needs, you'll be in touch with being tired if you're tired. And so you might need to sleep a little more. You'll be in touch with you're thinking a little bit more, so you'll know when it's time to concentrate on your breath, or when it's time for more kind self-talks, or whatever. If you've got a spouse, or someone you love, or children, and oh, you just want to <laughs> make them do it, right? Or children. Yeah, or children. <laughs> yeah, or and children, sorry. If you've got spouse and children or children or dogs or cats or anybody and you want them to get this so you want to make them do it get it in your own body it's just like the clocks get it in your own body and your children will pick it up from you automatically grandchildren critters um, people in the grocery line you may be the only one who's taking a deep breath so when situations get tense when you get really good at this, you can really be centered, really have the most strength available to you, the most calm and clear mind and thinking that you might need sometime. This comes in really handy. You might be the only one in a situation that other people might be thinking kind of crazy. And if you grab this, then you have all of you to deal with. And it might help the people around you. So. So it's good for you and it's good for our critters. It's good for everybody. And, and yet, you don't have to tell anybody to do it. With my clients, something happens in my sessions automatically. I start breathing my very best and my very most calm and my clients' bodies tune into that. And when I'm not my best, my clients don't get quite the same thing. And if I'm not clear about what it is I'm doing in that situation, then my client, I might start breathing like my client is breathing. Same situation in the home, in the office, in the grocery line. Depends on you know, who's holding sway more clearly or strongly or intentionally. So in my office,
because it's just a habit now after so long. But something happens and my body knows how to breathe. And my clients generally, their bodies tune into it, no matter, even if they're talking, and their mind might still be kind of going, their body will begin to tune into what I'm doing, and things will slow down. And it's not something I do on purpose, it's just that's the most conducive to healing or relaxation. Then, so if you get this baseline breathing way, way down so that you're minimally stressed and you know what to do when you're taken outside of yourself or when stressful situations arise, or when there is no stressful situations, there's a huge range of more subtle effects that come from breathing, the thinking, the emotions, and then you begin to play with that spectrum as well. So you discover all these other shades and flavors of your thinking and of your emotional body and also of your physical skills. And and that just that's just you getting to know yourself nothing more mystical than that. And my grandmother was really good at it. But it was mostly because she sang a lot. She sang um, just a couple generations ago. You know, we use these songs now. We think of them as children's songs. But many cultures sing a lot. There's a song for washing clothes and making butter. The military uses it when they're doing this marching thing and they're going, na 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 now they're not going to say, and now we'll synchronize our breath <coughs> by singing this song. They just start doing it, and suddenly they're all breathing together, and they're breathing rhythmically. And, and they may extend the exhale, because that's what happens when you talk and when you sing, but it's, it's still rhythmic. It's still even. It's not you little pauses while you're exhaling. It's a constant flow, and it's strong, and it's rhythmic, and your heart can still hang on to it. Uh, the different spiritual traditions use that in the form of the rosary or of mantras with meditation beads and so forth. And all of that just focuses the mind. And you can use, this is not, you know, it seems like it's mystical and exotic, but my grandmother did it when she shucked peas. You know, she just, everything was rhythmic. All of this helps the body. So. On one hand, it is you can get as exotic as you want, but at the same time, you'll find these same practices in every culture. And they may or may not relate it to the body, and it doesn't matter, because that still works, and it's still helpful. So, um, when you get really good at this, and get this down, then there's, you can take this way, way further. There's also a rhythm that happens in nostril dominance, just for the fun of it. Plug one nostril. <coughs> Breathe a couple times through that nostril. And then plug the other one. Was one nostril